The vast majority of the time when you're using Sibelius, you will have the numeric keypad open on screen. And the majority of the time you're using the keypad, you'll be using this layout here, which is the first keypad layout. You can see, however, along the top, there are six different keypad layouts. This video is going to explore those and see what other features are hidden behind this. One or two things are common to all the keypad layouts. The option for the voices is on all the keypad layouts, so you can always choose between which voice you want to start working on. And these buttons here are always there as well. And what these let you do is scroll through the keypads, or no matter where you happen to be, you can jump back to keypad one using the, this one here. So if you're on that pad there, jump back to, key, to keypad one from there. So let's have a look at them all in, in turn. The first keypad layout is the one that we that we know and love. Um, we've used pretty much everything on there already. All the standard notes, standard uh, accidentals and articulations. One thing that we haven't really mentioned though is this button here, which does the same job as the escape key. So if I, let's say I'm editing that note, there you go, and I want to escape, I can use that. That could be handy, for example, if you're um, working at an interactive whiteboard, for example, and it, you don't have easy access to the, the QWERTY keyboard. You could always use that instead. The rest of these, as I said, we've pretty much covered, so we can move on. The second keypad layout here gives you access to various um, different length notes. So you've got shorter notes here, you've got longer notes, double dotted, treble dotted, and you have access to grace notes, a tours, and a checker tours from up there. You also have the option to make notes cue sized. Let me show you that just so you can see what I mean. Does it like that? You may have um, seen, particularly if you play piano accompaniments um, regularly, you may have seen where the piano part is normal sized but the solo part is cue sized. Well, that's how you could do that. Um, the double dotted notes, the way they work, is exactly the same as you would expect. You select the note you want it to apply to, and just click the double dotted notes. Notice also that whenever a part of the keypad is, is being used, that it's highlighted up here. So this one is being used because we've got a crotchet, which is on the first pad, and this one is being used because it's double dotted, which is in the second pad. So you can always see what keypad layouts are actually being used when you have something highlighted, like so. This button here gives you the option to bracket note heads, which again could be handy if, um, for example, the second time through a repeated section, you don't want the first note to be played because it's following on from the first bit, if that makes sense. So you can bracket note heads. And again, almost everything here just toggles on and off, like so. So that's the second keypad. Third keypad, you actually spend a fair bit of time in here. Um, because this is where you can deal with all the beamings of the notes and where you can deal with the tremolos that you can add to various notes as well. Let me just um, demonstrate this a wee bit. I'm going to demonstrate one or two wee points on here. The beamings, first of all. Um, if I select, for example, let's look, let's look at this bar here. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to work with this bar here, bar 6. I might decide, for some reason, that I don't want to have two groups of four. I might decide for this particular bar I want um, that note there, I want to do a group of three, and then a group of two, and then another group of three. Well, what I could do is I would actually use that note. I suppose I could use that note, I could do it this way. I can take that note there, and I can make that the start of a beam. Like so. I then have a, a group of three and a group of five, so I can then take that note and make that the start of a beam. And you'll see, of course, up here that the beaming pad has been highlighted because I've altered the beaming for these notes. I could take a note and say that I don't want any beams on it at all. And of course, because I've chosen not to beam that note, I can't therefore beam that note unless I make that the start of a beam to the next note. So you get complete control over how the beams all work, um, what notes are, how the notes are grouped in the, in the bar. Remember, of course, that when you create a time signature, um, you have the option of adjusting the beaming groups universally, so that applies across the whole piece if you use the more options when you're creating your, your uh, time signature. But if you want to do it just for an individual bar or two, this is where you can do that. 
Other things in this keypad layout are the tremolos. Let me show you how these work. Down here, I'm going to quickly jump and I'm going to create, let's say, a minimum. Put a minimum there. Escape. Back to the beaming pad. And I can select the notes and I can add tremolos to the stem. And of course, as you would expect from Sibelius, it plays back properly. Which is handy. Also, you can, you can notice you can add uh, one stem, two stems, three stems, right the way up. So the one stem obviously would make it sound like quavers. Let me show you that. There you go. This would make it semi quavers. Etc. 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 Right up to this one here, which starts to hurt the piano player's hands. To be perfectly honest, you've also got a buzz um, tremolo here that you could use. I'm going to undo that for a wee second because I want to show you another wee feature that's on this this keypad layout, and I'm going to take that note there and I'm going to add another one after it. If I select the first note here, back to the third keypad and use this button, that will tremolo to the next note. And obviously at the moment it's quavers, but let's make it eights. And when I play that, again piano players in particular will, will recognise that. Violin players, string players tend to use those as well quite a lot. So that's the third keypad layout. Fourth one is where you can add various pauses, um, articulations again, more um, less common articulations, your mercatos. You've also got up bows and down bows here that you could use. Close signs, um, harmonics, etc. And three different types of pause. Normal pause, short pause and long pause. These three buttons at the top allow you to create your own keypad shortcuts. But that's for another video, to be honest. Next one here gives you access to various um, arpeggios. Up or down, you can choose how these work. Repeat bars. Um, either one bar, two bar, or four bars, and these are jazz articulations for doits and plops and falls, etc. And again, these will play back if you have if you've set the playback configuration to be one of the jazz configurations. And the last one here gives you access to some of the less common um, accidentals. So you've got things like quarter tones and microtones and natural sharps and quarter flats, etc, etc, etc. One thing that is no, that's worth noticing is this one here, which will bracket an accidental, even if you wouldn't normally do so. So this one here, for example, I might just decide I want to remind the player at that point that yes, that is a B flat, so I can just bracket it from there, just to emphasize the fact. It doesn't change the note in any way, it just looks, just adds the flat there, just to remind you to play a B flat. So that's a quick look at the various features in the keypad layout. And remember that all these features are all mapped to your physical keypad on your computer keyboard. You know, for example, that if I press number four on the first keypad layout, I get a crotch out, number five gives me a minimum, number six gives me a semi-brief. If I jump across to the keypad here, um, let's select a note. Let's do this one here. Third keypad layout. Those give me the tremolos and they adjust in the same way using the keypads on my, on my computer keyboard as they do when I'm in keypad 1 and that applies across all of the keypad layouts. So be aware that the keypad exists, the keypad layouts all exist, all these different features you have in there and feel free to make as much use of them as you need.